take a look now at how to set up a maintenance job. So maintenance being something we're going to go uh, and do on a recurring basis, such as lawn or garden maintenance. We'll set up a maintenance job in element time. And for this particular set of examples, we'll take a look at how to set up an all-inclusive or what we might call a contract job. What this is assuming is we don't have anything extra billable on this job. Everything is built into the contract price that they pay a month. So I don't need to track any extra information for billing. Here I've set up a job called Acme Plaza Contract. Now you might not put the word contract in the job name. I only did that for clarity of the example. Really, your job name and your job short name should be something the crews are going to really understand so that they make sure they're clocking into the correct job. It's really important to make sure your job short names are clear for your crews. That's what's going to show up on their phones. So if you've got three things called Acme Plaza and it's pretty unclear which one is which, I can guarantee your crews are probably going to track time to the wrong thing as well. I've got their address, their lat long, their customer information. And then one other thing I set up was a link to the site map. What I did is use Google Maps and a tool called Snagit to create a virtual site map for this site. It shows the crews the areas they're supposed to cut and gives them some notes. All I do is upload that picture to a Google Drive, and you can do the same to Dropbox or iCloud or OneDrive if you use any of those. And I just put the link to that document here. What that's going to give me is the ability for my crews when they're out on site to click a single button and to fire up the map when they're there to see what they're supposed to do. It's not something you have to set up on jobs, but it's great for quality control if you've got the time to do it. The key to time tracking is your tasks. So tasks are going to are going to set up how you want the crews to clock in. When the crews arrive at this job and they clock in, it's going to give them the choice of these four tasks and say, what are you working on? They're going to pick one of them and they're going to start to work. And that's how you're going to track your estimated versus actual hours. Now, you can be really simple with tasks. This is an all inclusive contract, so I didn't need to break it up. I could have just had one task called maintenance and the total number of hours for the entire season. That'd make it really easy for the crews to clock into, which is good, but it also wouldn't help me very much with estimating. If we were over budget, I wouldn't know whether we took longer to cut the grass or to do the cleanups or to do the maintenance. Hard to know where you went wrong on your estimate. So for this example, I created four tasks. Weekly maintenance for the weekly mowing, bed maintenance for, say, the monthly maintaining of the garden beds, and then a spring and fall cleanup to track time spent on there. Each one has their own estimated hours, so at the end of the year, I'll be able to review the job and see exactly what came in budget and what came in over budget. Now, the other thing is you don't want to get carried away with tasks. If you set up too many, it's going to be way too complicated for your crews. They're going to be clocking into the wrong ones probably often, or they're going to be confused on what they should clock into, and therefore you're going to get a bunch of incorrect or inaccurate data. So don't go overboard with tasks. Keep it as simple as you can, giving yourself just enough information to improve. Each task has an estimated hours, and each task also has some other factors, which I'll get to in a second. I don't need to set up any rates on the job. If this job is an all-inclusive contract, then I'm not billing anything over and above the contract price by the hour, and rates are only used when you're gonna bill some services by the hour. So for instance, if I was gonna do extras at $50 an hour, I could set up a rate here called $50 an hour for maintenance extras. And I can set up a task called extras to track that. But this is an all-inclusive contract, so we're not going to show that in this video. We'll show it in the next segment. I also have activities on the job. Now, I don't actually need any activities either. Activities and tasks can be confusing at first. It's important to remember this. A task is something that the crews clock in and out of. They're for managing time. An activity is something outside of time that you might want to track. For instance, could track materials like mulch, like I've got on the screen here. An activity could also track that a service was completed, like an inspection, for instance. An activity is anything you want to track that doesn't really relate to time. So tasks are what the crews are going to clock in and out of when they arrive at jobs. Activities are going to show up when they leave the job to say, did you do any of these things? Or did you complete any of these activities? And optionally, we could even track quantities of those activities so you could see exactly how much mulch the crews used. I have set up a mulching activity on this job, and I've set the track quantity to on. When you set up an activity, it's going to ask you for the name, the units, and whether you want to track quantities. 
Well, if you want to know how many yards of mulch the crew used, you're going to want to make sure the track quantities is yes. But it doesn't mean I have to actually bill for it. Again, if, if this is an all-inclusive contract, and that's the example I'm showing in here, I'm going to set it to not billable. If it was billable, if I was billing, for example, at a flat rate of uh, $1,200 for mulch, I could set per app fixed price. Or if I was billing by the yard, I could set up per unit and it would charge it X amount of dollars per the yard. But here we're doing not billable, so I'm just going to leave it at that. This will allow me to track how much mulch we used without actually billing the client anything for it. Again, we're assuming that's all covered in the contract price. Let's see now what this job looks like when crews clock into it. The crew, of course, goes down and hits add a job and then picks the job we're working on. That's Acme Plaza. Then they go next, confirm the employees that are with the foreman that day, and then pick the task they're working on. I'm going to pick that bed maintenance task just so I can show you the activity on the back end when the crews clock out. I'm going to clock into bed maintenance. And now they're clocked in. So they were at the shop from this time to this time, and now they're working on the bed maintenance at this property. Now when the crews finish that job, they're gonna clock out. So they're gonna clock out by either clocking out for the day or perhaps going on to the next property in their list. I'll click on the next property, confirm the, new, the employees for the next property, the task, get the notes. And then because we're clocking out of that Acme Plaza contract, it recognizes that when you're on bed maintenance, prompt the crews for activity. So it's asking them, how much mulch are you using? The reason it knows that is because when I set up that contract for Acme Plaza, under the tasks and bed maintenance, it says show activities on clock out. It's going to go to this list of activities in your job to figure out which activities to show, whether I should track quantities and whether it's billable or not. So back to the crew's timesheet now, it's asking them, did you do mulching when you clocked into this bed maintenance? If they tick yes, it's gonna say how many yards and they could put 12. Then the crew could put a little note in here. Hit save. Now I can not only tell how many hours I spent at Acme Plaza doing bed maintenance, but I could also tell how much mulch we used by generating any one of the number of reports that shows you my activities and the quantities used. For an all-inclusive contract, that's about all I need to set up. I don't need very many extras. I don't need very many rates or any rates, in fact. Just need to set up the job and the tasks that you want to track time by.